Welcome to week three of my show, Extra Time. And a different feel to the show today. We've got a couple of cameras uh, still experimenting. It's still early days. And we've got uh, some uh, nice content on the show today. No script, just a running order. Coming up shortly, some rare footage from our archives featuring this guy. I mean, I'd have been disappointed if we had a 1-0. One, one More from George in a few minutes. I wonder if you know what game he was talking about. Later in the show, we've got Brian Mulholland who's going to be telling us why he wants to rename K-Stand the Jimmy Murphy Stand. Molly and his wife Gail are true Red fans. They uh, had their wedding day at Old Trafford. There's another picture somewhere. There we go. They had the wedding reception and the, uh, the, wedding, the whole wedding day at Old Trafford. So that was fantastic. And uh, we'll be hearing more from uh, Brian, Molly, to his friends a little bit later. Well, first, this VT from the late David Meek, talking about Sir Bobby Charlton. When I first started um, covering the club, um, Bobby was still in hospital from the Munich air crash and we had to wait a while uh, until he was sufficiently strong enough to start playing again. So I didn't meet him straight away, but of course I knew all about him and I had actually seen him play before the Munich air crash and I realised uh, what an exceptional player he was. Um, and then I always felt that he'd gone into the crash as a boy and he'd come out as a man because because of the force of circumstances and the number of players who lost their lives, he, he emerged as one of the senior players. And uh, what I admire so much about him is that he shouldered that responsibility and took it on himself to be a, uh, a leader. I mean, he was the captain, uh, so that's the role that was expected of him. But he, he, he was more than the captain, he was an inspiration. And uh, I remember Matt Busby telling me one day that he said, I, I, I have my low moments of depression and wondering whether uh, I'll ever get this club back working as a football club again. He said, but whenever I feel like that, I think of Bobby Charlton and he inspires me and, and helps me to keep going. So Bobby had a, uh, an unspoken role at Manchester United, which I think helped Man Matt Busby and I think it helped a lot of players as well. I mean, it was chalk and cheese when it came to Bobby and George Best. And some people like to bang on about the comparisons between them. Well, you can't make comparisons between them. There were different kinds of players and they were also at different stages of life. Bobby was married by then. And George was single and fancy free. So it wasn't about... Some people would read into that 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 Bobby and George didn't get on, that they were sort of somehow hostile to each other. That wasn't the case. It was just that they had different interests. They were both at different stages of their lives. Bobby, at the end of training, would go home to his wife and family. George would, I don't know, go straight out on the town. So you, you didn't expect them to socialise together. But as... Uh, talented footballers, they were both quite uh, magical. And uh, I admired Bobby as much as I admired George Best. Bobby, because he was the nearest thing to uh, graceful ballet type um, play as, as anybody I've ever seen in football. He just floated over the ground and he packed a, one heck of a, pu a punch when it came to uh, shooting. In fact, I think it was the Germans when they played uh, uh, in, in, in Europe, uh, christened him Boom Boom. And then when United had gone to play in Germany one day uh, without Bobby because he was injured, and the question that the press wanted kept, kept asking, where's Boom Boom? And they meant Bobby because he had this boom of a shot. You'll probably gather that I rolled that VT a little bit early. <laughs> I was going to uh, mention beforehand that uh, my good friend David Meek, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago, would have been 90 last week, mentioned him on the show last week, and I did promise 
that we'd uh, show some clips from the archive. And uh, Miki uh, has seen a lot of, uh, well, since the Munich air disaster in 58, Miki saw all the, uh, the highlights of Man United. Uh, I've interviewed him quite a few times and uh, just wanted to mark the 90th, what would have been the 90th birthday of uh, David Meek, a uh, couple of, uh, well, last week actually, just before last weekend. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Miki uh, knew all the United players and uh, that was a little bit of a tribute to Bobby Charlton. And uh, the reason for playing that clip really was, uh, it was interesting to hear him talk about George and uh, Bobby and uh, how the fact that a lot of people thought they didn't get, get on, but they were really just different sorts of people. Anyway, that's linking me nicely, I think. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't practice and you don't have a script, but uh, hopefully that links me into the next piece, which is uh, going to be a little piece from the archives with Georgie Best. And uh, a lot of you will know that on uh, Friday, it would have been, well, it is the uh, anniversary of Man, Man United won the European Cup for the first time. And... Uh, Here's a clip from George talking about that game. I mean, I, I'd have been disappointed if we had a 1-0, one, one because I wanted to go there and, and score six or seven, because we'd already beaten them 5-1 five, five, uh, at their own ground. But it, it didn't work that way. And of course, Eusebio had a chance to, to clinch it for them, and Alex made the save. I mean, they keep talking about it being a great save, but it, it wasn't particularly great. He just. <laughs> I mean, you say, but if you give him the same chance, he'd score 99 times out of 100. But he didn't. And, the, and I, then I, I thought we knew that, uh, that we were destined to win it. And of course, the extra time we, we came out and uh, both sides were, were shattered. I mean, it had been fast and furious. And uh, we sat down and the boss came out and Wilf McGuinness and Jack Crompton, the trainer, and Johnny Aston, who was there. And uh, we were all having our legs rubbed. And, and I remember Sir Matt saying, you think you're tired, have a look at them. And we looked across and they were, they were gasping. <laughs> and we came out and uh, that was it. You know, Bobby scored a great goal, Kiddo got one on his 19th birthday. I got the one that put us in the lead. So, it was, uh, so the 90 minutes had been forgotten where we could have lost it. Uh, and the whole game uh, was around to the, the first 50 minutes of extra time. I get really annoyed because they keep showing the, the last bit, but <laughs> it started off. Shay Brennan, who was our right back on the night, passed it back to Alex Stepney. He still says he uh, uh, says that he made the goal for me. <laughs> so he passed it back to Alex, and Alex just smashed it upfield. And it was flicked on, I don't know, I think by Dave Sadler maybe. But I, I still had to beat the centre half, so I stuck it through his legs, which I'd always dreamt of doing <laughs> in the European Cup final and then took it around the keeper. And I remember thinking, because I'd always dreamt as a kid of, of playing in a final, and I was going to take it up to the line and stop it and, and head it in. But when I went past him, <laughs> he got up too quick for me. So I, I just knocked it in. So the whole sequence was just, uh, was just I mean, it was so quick. And, and it was only a couple of minutes in the, the extra time. And, and that was it. Then it was, it was all over, they, they were gone. Yeah, Georgie, my hero. That was the first game I actually remember watching as a Man United fan. I was eight years old at the time. I watched it on a little black and white telly with my dad. And uh, I do remember I was going to games before that, but I was probably going too young because I don't actually remember my first game. I think it was only five or six. My dad and my uncle, Ron and Tony, used to take me to Old Trafford and uh, it was impossible uh, not to be uh, in love with the football team because we were spoiled for choice. We had three Ballon d'Or winners, Best Law and Charlton. And uh, they overshadowed a lot of their star players that were in the team. Because we had a, a team full of stars. I mean, Paddy Crerand. I mean, uh, Paddy. <laughs> He's a madman, I know. And uh, he was a fantastic footballer. He was a Paul Scholes of his generation, to be honest. And uh, it was such a fabulous team. And when, it doesn't seem fair, really, to have three players like Law Best and Charlton in the same team. And we've never had a, three players like that in the same team since. And uh, I don't think we'll ever see the likes of the, them again. Anyway, as you can see... Uh, little bit rough around the edges and I haven't really got enough viewers today. I think we might have lost a few people last week. And uh, I was having a little bit of a test beforehand to try and uh, make sure that we had audio because I've got different equipment this week and uh, it's quite a lot to do to present and to produce and to direct and to make it all work. And uh, I've kept it low profile the first few weeks because I just want to see how things work and to make sure that things do work. 
but if you can help me out by sharing things. I know a lot of people do watch the programme afterwards. The first week we had uh, three and a half thousand people watched it after a week, but I think probably only about 100 people watched it live. At the moment I think we've only got 20 people live and uh, it might be down to me because when I was trying to do a little quick test beforehand, uh, I'm not sure if I disrupted the uh, scheduled link that I'd already posted in the Facebook page. But anyway, most of the people I can see are watching are people that I know. We've got uh, John from the USA, I think you are John. Uh, we've got Matt Cook, who's a son of uh, my good friend Rose Cook Monk. We've got Kerry. Uh, you might see yourself uh, very briefly later in the program, Kerry. <laughs> Brian and Jean, who were on the show last week. Who else have we got? We've got Richard Sharp, great guy. Thank you for your support, mate. Mark O'Connor, who does such fabulous work with the Australian Supporters Club, North New South Wales, and uh, he's always... Mark seems to be more cloned than me. He gets everywhere. I don't know how he does it, but uh, at the moment we're not getting anywhere because we're all locked in, although I'm getting to the office, of course. Who else we got? Yera Vertanen, superstar. Uh, Yera, you probably noticed, has had amazing publicity over the last... Uh, well, particularly today. Host of uh, the front page on the website of the CNN. A fantastic little piece that was done by CNN to promote the Red Room. I'm so disappointed that we haven't been over to Helsinki yet. Uh, we were supposed to be over there... Uh, just when lockdown was about to start. I was going to go there with uh, Brian Robson and Wes Brown and Lee Martin and uh, Ben Thornley, but hopefully uh, we're going to happen. We're going to get over there when it's safe to get out of this, uh, get out of this place. I've just noticed that Stuart Hill's joined us. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Good to see uh, you joining us. Um, I've also got Lisa, Lisa Eason. I know that I saw Tony earlier and uh, I think he came early because the uh, last couple of weeks I did a 15 minute countdown but a couple of people said it was a little bit boring or took too long. So uh, I really had the countdown as a, as a buffer. Hello, Pete Wood, my good mate. Uh, I really had the countdown originally as a buffer because uh, Mr. Alan Keegan, who does such a great job with his show, always overruns a little bit and uh, he always goes into Fergie time. So I treated the countdown as a little bit of a buffer zone so people could join us. Uh, but I thought this week I'd make it 9.15. Didn't really tell anybody. I just did it. <laughs> And uh, maybe next week, if I can get the hang of this, uh, we'll give it a little bit more of a PR beforehand because uh, really this show is for you guys. I'm trying to feature the fans and it's important to uh, get you watching. Otherwise, there's no point in me doing this. Otherwise, it's me talking to myself and I'm talking to myself. I can do that uh, when I'm at home because uh, I do talk to myself a lot. But anyway, I've waffled on a little bit there. I wanted to mention uh, all the people that were watching. I think I mentioned everybody who's here at the moment. And... Uh, the, the star attraction today is Molly, Brian Mulholland, who's uh, got a campaign to try and name the uh, K-stand the Jimmy Murphy stand. I'm not going to go into lots of details about Jimmy Murphy because everybody knows about Jimmy Murphy. And if you don't, go and Google him. Uh, Jimmy Murphy is going to be one of the stars of the next film that I'm working on. Jimmy Murphy, Duncan Edwards and uh, Harry Gregg are the three main characters. Also, uh, obviously going to look into the whole tribute to the uh, Busby Babes, but I uh, want to pay tribute to the Manchester Munich Memorial Foundation and the Association of Former Players who do such great work to keep alive the, uh, the legacy of our football club. And this is pretty much what Molly's been doing with his campaign. And uh, let's, uh, I did speak to Molly earlier. It's not live because I can't trust the equipment at the moment to go live. And uh, I think it's going to be more enjoyable by having a little bit of VT. So, QVT. So joining me now is Brian Mulholland, Molly to his friends. And Molly is the man behind the campaign to get the uh, K-stand named the Jimmy Murphy stand. Molly, how are you? I'm fine, right as rain, mate. Thank you. Now tell me about uh, Jimmy Murphy. Well, uh, where does one start about the man? Um, such an iconic footballing Welsh figure that... It was a major, major, major part of our wonderful, wonderful football club, which, after Munich, as everybody knows, kept the club afloat with his massive, massive heart that was instilled into the club. Without Jimmy Murphy, we would not be having this conversation now, I don't think. And I don't think our amazing football club would be there anymore. That is why I decided that as a massive, massive tribute to this great, great man, 
the stand where I sit, K stand, or the East stand as they like to call it, which I don't, should be named after this great man. There's two other stands, as everybody knows. The Sir Alex Ferguson stand and the Sir Bobby Charlton stand. Great honour to both those men, both great men of our football club, but why have we not got a stand named after the great man, Jimmy Murphy? Without this man, those both stands would not be standing today, and neither would our magnificent stadium. We owe so much to Jimmy Murphy, I think it's the least thing that the club and the fans can do. I know people will say, well, there's an academy named after him at Carrington, the training ground. Yes, great, fantastic. But who sees his name adorned on that building, apart from people that go, delivery drivers, the press? His name should be seen every time the cameras adorn Old Trafford and span round the ground and see his name on the stand, the same as he do with Sir Bobby Charlton and Sir Alex Ferguson stand. Molly, as you've said there, and I've heard a lot of footballers say, you know, without Jimmy Murphy, there wouldn't be a Manchester United. What kind of response have you had to the campaign? Um, very, very good, actually. Uh, the campaign which I started was put on by Gail, my wife, as you well know. She actually put it on social media and started the web page off. It went well for a couple of years and then it, it died a little bit. And then Steve Donoghue, Donu, he sort of came in and resurrected it a little bit. And I'm in touch, obviously, with the Murphy family. I speak on a regular basis with them. And I just need a push. I need a, a link into the club to try and get this stand named after it. And what kind of support have you had from the Murphy family themselves? Uh, very, very good support. The lads and Nick, uh, yeah, they're all for it. Uh, but as I say, at the end of the day, uh, it's not down to the Murphy family, it's down to Manchester United Football Club. that They decide whether this will be a reality, and hopefully it will be one day. Now, a couple of years ago, possibly less, the Association of Former Players contacted Manchester United and made a a formal bid to get a statue for Jimmy Murphy. What do you think of an alternative of a statue? I don't think it's a big enough fitting tribute to the man. I was going to mention Duncan Edwards because you're wearing a Duncan Edwards T-shirt there. And tell me about the T-shirt. And uh, I think somebody famous signed it, didn't they? Yeah, this T-shirt, um, I was welcomed and invited by our Rose, Rose Cook Monk, to the blue plaque unveiling in Priory Park where Duncan first played football. Rose invited me to it, and it was, the plaque was going to be unveiled, and was unveiled actually, by Sir Bobby Charlton. Um, I got invited to it. I was stood in the building when Sir Bobby and his wife came in, Norma, and he walked straight up to me and said to me, Excuse me, where did you get that T-shirt from? And I said, Sir Bobby, I haven't got a clue. I've had it so, so many years. I don't know, I may have got it in, in Benidorm or wherever. I said, but I've had it for years and years and years and years. And I put it on today. Our respect to the wonderful man. And I then said to him, please, would you sign it? And he said... I would love to sign it. What a wonderful, wonderful player this man was. It'd be my pleasure to sign it. And there it is, which is a treasured gift that I'll never, ever get rid of. Molly, that's a lovely story. I also want to mention the Manchester Munich Memorial Foundation because it's a group of volunteers and you're heavily involved with that as well. And it's all part of keeping alive the, 
the legacy of Manchester United. And uh, it seems that you're very well entrenched with doing this on a personal basis and with the organisations that you've helped to support. Yes, the MMF, it's, it's a magnificent um, group of guys, girls, that, as you say, are keeping the legacy of the babes for years and years and years to come. You know, we, as you know, we contribute funds to Belgrade, Munich, Manchester, and we will continue to do so. We've got a couple of young books coming on with us now to carry it on. Uh, Pat Burns, Crooked, just to name a couple, do great things, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful foundation. Um, and I'm proud to be part of the MMMF. That's brilliant, and th- I really appreciate you coming on the show today, uh, Molly. But just to, to wrap up, can you just give us a final message to anybody out there who's thinking about supporting your uh, campaign to get the Jimmy Murphy stand uh, named after Jimmy Murphy? What would you say to people if they're thinking about whether or not they should support you? All I can say is please, please, please get behind me in the support. This needs to happen. If you're a true red-blooded United fan, you want, you've got to want this to happen. Not for my benefit or anybody else's. We need Jimmy Murphy's name adorned on K-Stand as soon as humanly possible. Please. That's brilliant, Molly. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate that. It's a a very strong and powerful message, and uh, I urge everybody to uh, sign the petition. We're going to put it in the links, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get a bit of a boost this week. So thanks, Molly. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for your time, John. Good night. I will chop up the programme later and uh, I'll put the clean version of that uh, video featuring Molly out on Facebook and YouTube. So that will be clean uh, without the comments. The comments are really for the live show. I think I mentioned in that piece there that uh, the association of former players did request that the football club provide a statue for Jimmy Murphy and uh, they turned that down. It's not a criticism of the current uh, board because this is something that's... uh, been in place for a long time. The fact that we haven't recognised Jimmy Murphy at the stadium, of course, as uh, Molly mentioned, we've got uh, the Jimmy Murphy Centre at Carrington, which I've been to in the film there a few times, but not many people get to see it. And, uh, you know, as Molly said, and as a lot of former Man United players have said, without Jimmy Murphy, they wouldn't be in Manchester United. Anyway, what else have we got? That's pretty much it from the VT department. I was, uh, I did mention last week we might be having Gordon Hill on and I've spoken to Gordon a few times in uh, the last week or so, but uh, still not confident with the live stuff because the technology uh, a little bit, little bit, takes a little bit of practice because uh, even uh, recording the VTs, I've managed to uh, make a couple of little mistakes today by keeping my microphone open. And uh, also uh, the last couple of weeks I was streaming the, the programme off my phone uh, using a laptop, but now I've got this uh, camera, my professional camera, which doesn't necessarily look fantastic, but what it does do is uh, it helps a lot because what happens is when I start the programme or start the countdown, it's actually light <laughs> and now it's dark. So with the, uh, with the mobile phone when I was using that as a camera, it was, it was very dark because it was, it wasn't, I wasn't able to set it in the way that I can set the, uh, the proper camera. So that's my GH5 camera, which I use to make my films, whether it's for the TV or cinema or online or whatever. And uh, the uh, mobile phone camera is this one over here, which is, uh, you can see how hot it is in here. <laughs> so let's go to that one because it doesn't look so, quite so bad. But anyway, uh, we will get Gordon on uh, at some point, but uh, I want to really uh, practice with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the live on a sort of private basis before we go live to the, to the world. And uh, one other thing I should mention, I made a note there, uh, very nice to see Paul Murphy, one of the Murphy family, uh, watching the, the Molly piece there. And uh, it is uh, very much a case of the Murphy family are very much behind the campaign by Molly and uh, everybody else who supported that campaign. And uh, that's pretty much why I wanted to uh, make the next film, We Will Never Die, The Religion, We Will Never Die, to pay tribute to the guys who've uh, either been forgotten or overlooked. I mean, obviously nobody's ever going to f- forget Duncan Edwards. And as you know, I'm 
an ambassador and now a director of the Duncan Edwards Foundation and my good friend Rose Cook Monk is doing a fantastic job uh, keeping Duncan's memory alive in Dudley uh, and all the fundraising that she does is absolutely fantastic and uh, it's absolutely a privilege and honour to be able to uh, help out in a small way. Uh, the other big star of the film is Harry Gregg of course and I've got eight and a half hours I spent with Harry in his home and I've got an exclusive interview which has never been seen and that's part of that's going to be part of the film. I'm just so disappointed that Harry's not going to be able to see it. But uh, obviously, uh, it's sad that he's not with us anymore. But hopefully, uh, the film will uh, do him justice. I was hoping to use the film to put a little bit of pressure on because I think it's pretty much a disgrace that Harry was never knighted. And to a lot of us, he is Sir Harry, and uh, it would have been nice if he'd been recognised in his lifetime. Hopefully, the film will do him justice, and uh, I'll talk about that on another day. Okay, there was uh, something else that I was going to mention. If I can find the link, where's it gone? I think I've lost it. <laughs> yeah, I did mention uh, the street sport charity and uh, they won another award last week and I forgot to mention that it was uh, the street sports star charity is all part of the Dennis Law Legacy Trust. The Dennis Law Legacy Trust is the charity that's uh, backed by Dennis and it's uh, run by a fantastic committee up there in Aberdeen and they're really doing some uh, great work for the community in Aberdeen and it's something that would be nice if it was rolled out in other parts of the country but it it takes a fantastic amount of dedication from the people up there in Aberdeen and uh, it really is a full-time job for those guys and just congratulations again to Street Sport Charity for the award that they won last week. Okay I think that's about it and th this program is pretty much for you guys and uh, you know if you've got any requests of what you want to see on the show I'm not sort of trawling YouTube and putting stuff on that I haven't got rights to. I'm very much going to make this program about dipping into my own archive and uh, talking about things which I think need to be talked about. I'm hoping that as the program uh, gets more following, I'll be able to make it more interesting to more people. At the moment, it's very much people I know, and I can see by running through the uh, comments there. There's just one person there who I don't know, Raymond Wilde. Thanks for joining, Raymond. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, just sign, but <laughs> congratulations. Hopefully you just signed up to the page and you'll be able to find the uh, programme next week. I think I might have made a mistake when I posted it. It was uh, all popping up on people's timelines. And then when I went to do a practice, I think it unhooked the schedule. So uh, I did delay the actual uh, coming on live by a minute in the hope that people will be able to find me. And we also had the uh, three minute countdown. But uh, I think I lost a lot of people by uh, moving it or not moving it on purpose, but... Uh, destroying the link which I created earlier today and I think the promotion is very much uh, part of this and uh, letting people know that you're doing this so hopefully the show wasn't too bad and uh, I know the VT packages are great because I made those earlier in the day and uh, as I said I'll be chopping those up and putting them on the, uh, the Man United YouTube channel Man United uh, YouTube youtube.com forward slash Man United the religion that you can see uh, you'll be able to see the link in the uh, description when I update it You've also got the link for the uh, Jimmy Murphy stand petition. And uh, I'll be posting stuff on Facebook, Watch and on YouTube. I think a lot more people at the moment are going to be watching on Facebook, certainly because I've got about 42,000 followers on the uh, Man United The Religion Facebook page. And uh, that's where a lot of the uh, views will come from in the early days. But uh, I'm also building up the uh, YouTube Watch. And uh, I think the YouTube is possibly a younger audience. And uh, I know a lot of my followers possibly a little bit more mature. We haven't got the... Uh, the very young audience at the moment. Anyway, enough uh, waffling from me. I hope to see you next week. If you've got any requests, please send in your selfie videos if you want to appear on the show. That kind of died out a little bit this week. Uh, we had a, quite a few selfie videos over the first couple of weeks and uh, some mighty fine ones indeed. And I thank everybody who's, uh, who's contributed. So I'm just going to play out now with a little bit of music so you've got a chance to make your final comments. But thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you again next week. Cheers.